The Rolex GMT was designed as a watch suitable for the aviation industry. And what makes this watch unique is that it has a fourth hand which facilitates the display of an additional time when used in conjunction with the markings on the outer bezel. I was recently contacted by a friend who mentioned that they would like to have their watch serviced as it had not been looked at in quite some time. We agreed to meet and he presented me with this lovely 18 karat gold Rolex GMT Master 2. This watch looked in great condition and it obviously looked after it very well. He's owned it for only 18 months after buying it used and it's not clear whether the movement had been serviced regularly by a Rolex store for eyes service center or not, but as we shall see soon, I would suggest it wasn't due to some marks and evidence of over oiling. Now I know it wouldn't surprise you if I state that this is not a cheap watch and in fact I've seen them being sold online for substantial amounts of money and they tend to hold their value very well. But whether you're a fan of Rolex or not, it has to be said that the movement quality in these watches are most certainly on the high end. I'm pretty sure that seems like I'm stating the obvious, but it doesn't always hold true that you get what you pay for when you're purchasing luxury products. In this case, with these watches, I would most certainly state that you do get a lot of watch for your money. The movements are developed by Rolex and they are well designed. I mean, as we shall see soon, this movement has not had the best quality of servicing in the past and in particular the lubrication is certainly not to Rolex standards, but the real world performance is still holding up. I'm getting readings of around plus five or six seconds a day despite all the above. Now I'm not an authorized Rolex service technician myself, neither have I been trained by Rolex. I've been a professional independent watch repairer for several decades, but I've never wanted to specialize in a particular watch brand. So the methods shown in this video may not be official methods as taught by Rolex, but they do stack up with general watch repairing principles. And the owner of the watch is fully aware of this and has accepted that fact. So in this video, I'm going to strip down the movement. Well, <laughs> as you can see, I've already started. The parts will be cleaned off camera and then I shall rebuild the movement, lubricating it as I go along. And finally, I'll see about tightening up the performance. Although it is running well at the moment, I suspect we can get a better result once the movement is cleaned and lubricated. But as you can see, I've removed the movement from the watch case and I've taken off the dial and hand and of course the calendar ring and what we're looking at now is the additional GMT complication. To expose the GMT works, all I need to do is remove these two screws, which is holding down the cover plate here. And now I can remove the GMT components. The date indicator seating is held secure with four blued screws. Now, we regret these screws have been slightly damaged in the past and unfortunately that will be a common theme as I continue to dismantle this movement.
removing the date indicator seating exposes the calendar and keyless works. Looking at the underside of the date seating, I can see a substantial spread of oil, uh, most likely spread from the keyless works. But I shall continue and remove the date wheel. Now, it should be noted that there is a small jewel resting on the yoke, which is held under tension against the wheel's cam. So here we can see more evidence of too much lubrication. These intermediate wheels are actually really quite flooded. So now I can remove the balance assembly. Now the balance bridge is held secure with two screws. And now I can remove the automatic mechanism, which actually comes off as a complete module. I will dismantle the auto mechanism shortly, but for now I'll let down any residual power from the mainspring and dismantle the ratchet wheel. And look at the oil down that screw hole of the barrel arbor. Oil has absolutely no business being there at all. Uh, this is really quite bizarre. And now I can remove the train wheel bridge and again we're seeing scuffs and scratches on these screw heads which, well, is a bit of a shame. So that's the train and escapement removed. I can now remove the barrel bridge assembly and remove the mainspring barrel. 
and here we can see again evidence of over oiling. The click spring doesn't want to be separated from the click. Sadly, we can see some scratches here on the mainspring barrel. And this is the balance hack which arrests the balance when the crown is pulled out to the handset position. Now I can remove the keyless works. And I do apologize for my video framing here. I didn't realize until too late that I'd gone off camera. Now luckily I had this picture in picture shot from the live stream of this service. So this shot is not completely uninteresting. Now I've opened the barrel lid here and as you can see there's quite a lot of gunk inside, it's dried up grease. I'll remove the uh, mainspring before cleaning but for now I'll dismantle the automatic module. And that's it. The movement is fully stripped down and ready for the cleaning machine. Now I've cleaned most of the parts in the machine and will clean some manually. I'll also need to treat some of the parts with a product called Fixer Drop, which will help to prevent the new fresh oil from leaving its position.
and with the parts cleaned and treated, I can start the rebuild and I shall start by assembling the barrel and mainspring. To replace the mainspring into the barrel, I'll be using my set of mainspring winders, and here I'm choosing an appropriately sized attachment so that the spring can be installed without damage. Now this being an automatic watch, the barrel walls do need to be applied with a special braking grease and you may notice some graffiti inside the barrel. Looks like the number 19. And after winding the mainspring into the tool, I can transfer it into the barrel. And with that done, I can replace the barrel arbor and the barrel lid. And now I'm assembling the winding bridge and the crown wheel and its core. And with that done, I'll now assemble the automatic module.
and now I will assemble the keyless works. And I can replace the balance hack and winding bridge. Now I'll install the minute pinion and its bridge. And in goes the mainspring barrel and its bridge.
now I'm installing the intermediate crown wheel and its core and the sliding gear. and in goes the click and click spring. Now I neglected to treat the escape wheel and the pallet fork with fixer drop earlier so I can get that out of the way now. And with that done, I can assemble the train of wheels along with the train wheel bridge. And on goes the uh, ratchet wheel. I can now install the pallet fork. Now off camera, I lubricate the pallet stones and the escape wheel teeth. And with that done, I can install the balance assembly. And here you can see the screw used on the right looks really quite scuffed. Now this is impossible to see with the naked eye as it is really, really that small. But shot with a 4K camera and a macro lens, it doesn't look so good. I'm pretty sure that if this was sent to Rolex, they would simply just replace these damaged screws and of course charge accordingly. Polishing these screw heads would be another option, but that is very time consuming task and really doesn't fall into the category of maintenance servicing but rather restoration work.
Now I can secure the automatic module to the movement. Turning my attention to the dial side, I can now reassemble the calendar and motion works. And finally, I can assemble the GMT complication.
So now I'm ready to replace the dial and hands and refit the movement to the watch case. And on goes the oscillating weight. It is not really common for Rolex calibers to have a simple regulating arm for adjusting the rate, but rather adjustments are made to weights on the balance. With this movement, the weights are actually screwed to the inside of the balance rim, and they have a special shaped tool, meaning that they can only be adjusted with the use of that special tool, and this is called a microstella tool. Now this tool has a socket to interface with the adjustments perfectly, and attempting to turn them without this tool well, that will likely end badly. The balance will usually have two screws opposite each other, although this movement has four, and the two opposites should be adjusted evenly. If they are adjusted towards the balance rim, the rate will be reduced, and if they're adjusted towards the balance staff, the rate will increase. The tool has markings and a weight which shifts position as you adjust the angle whilst turning the screw. Now each marking does represent one second per day of adjustment. So with this watch, I'm currently seeing an average rate of plus five or six seconds per day. And to tighten this up, I'll use this tool to adjust the weights towards the balance rim. Now this may disappoint you, but I have no intention of doing this on camera as I need to get in real close and I don't want to risk damage to the parts. Now I know these will be extremely hard for me to replace, so it's not worth the risk, but I will post a document with the full instructions as a PDF for you to download from the file section of our watch repair Facebook group or from my website. There will be a link in the description of this video. So here is a before. Thank you. 
And now that I've adjusted the rate, here is a five position readout. And so that's it. I know that this is not service to Rolex standards, but the owner of the watch is very aware of this. Of course, my recommendation to him would be to have this watch overhauled by Rolex officially, in particular to replace the damaged screws and the mainspring and the barrel. I'm pretty sure that that graffiti in the barrel is not from the factory. But these problems are cosmetic and will not really affect the running of the watch. And that being said, the performance is really looking good, and I'd like to thank the owner for allowing me to use this watch on the watch repair channel. But what did you think about this watch? I mean, please let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you like the video, then please consider clicking the thumbs up button below the video as this does help towards promoting the channel. And if you do like this content and would like to see more in the future, then feel free to subscribe if you're not already done so. It's free and if you click the bell icon, you'll be informed whenever I publish new content. And if you wish to learn more about watch repair, then consider my website. There's a link in the description of this video. And on my website, I offer a from the ground up watch repair course, which will help you get started. And as always, thank you to all my patrons who helped to keep this channel alive. But with all that said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.